what do you what do you think? Hat forward? <laughs> this is more me. Hat back. There we go. Not getting comfy. No hat. <laughs> That's better. Not for you, though, because you get stuck looking at my Chia Pet. Oh, all humor aside, welcome back for another video, everyone. My name is Jason. I'm a Christian YouTuber. I'm a pastor. And I got a quick question for you. What do you do when something huge happens in life? Completely and totally unexpected, and you're not prepared for it at all. I mean, where do you go? What do you do? Where do you turn? Today, I'm going to break it all down for you sharing with you exactly what you got to do, how to get that thing that you desperately have to have, and even some peace in your heart. All that coming up in just a moment. Hey, 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 what is going on, everyone? Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm on a mission to help you see yourself as valued, worthy, and wanted, even when other people can't or won't see you that way. If that's something that you want more of in your life, and I want to encourage you, start right now by subscribing to the channel. Click that little button down there and ring that little notification bell. And that way you won't miss any future videos just like this one. What do you say we tear up this content and just dig in? Let's do this. I've been there. You might be there right now. A lot of people are there right now. Life happens. There's times in life when there's things that we just really, really need. We're, we're desperate for something. A material need. COVID did a whammy on this whole country. A lot of people lost their jobs. You might have been one of them. I own my own business, but I couldn't collect unemployment, and my business, the church, has kind of dried up. And So I get it. I've been there. I understand where a lot of you are right now. Maybe you're having a hard time paying the bills. Maybe you're behind in the mortgage. Well, Jesus shared with us what we can do, how we can approach God through prayer. And not only that, what we can do to get that thing that we desperately have to have, even when it's a really, really bad and urgent need. Jesus shared with his disciples at a time when they approached him and said, Jesus, will you please teach us how to pray? And so he used the moment as a teachable time to share with his disciples, not only how to pray and get closer to God's heart, but how to also get that thing that they desperately have to have. And that's what we're going to look at today in the Gospel according to Luke chapter 11. If you have your Bible handy, open it up to Luke chapter 11 and follow along with me. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation today. It's actually my favorite version. But let's say you don't have a paper Bible handy, but you got your smartphone out. Well, download the YouVersion Bible app. I'll put a link in the description section below where you can find links to that both in the Apple Store and both in Google Play. And that way you can download the YouVersion Bible app if you don't already have it installed on your phone. It's a great app. I recommend following along with it. It's phenomenal. And oh, by the way, if you're looking for a brand new Bible version, you're just looking for something different, but you don't know what to choose, let me encourage you, check out this video up here after this one. And well, you'll have a lot of fun with it. It's humorous and it'll help you find the best Bible version for you for 2020. Okay, let's read Luke chapter 11 together. Here we go. Once Jesus was in a certain place praying. As he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples to pray. Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come. Give us each day the food we need. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation. Let's put a pause right there. Let's look at verses one through four. So we really see Jesus's heart here in his prayer. We've come to know this is the Lord's prayer. And if you're anything like me, you maybe learned it as a little kid. Maybe you even learned the King James Version because it's so poetic and the, the tempo and the rhyme is just, it's there. It's beautiful. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us for evil. For thine is the kingdom, for the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It's a beautiful prayer. And in that prayer, we really see Jesus' heart. 
And I don't know if he really ever meant it as a formula. I pray exactly like this, these exact words every time. But he is giving us a template. And that very first portion of the template is for us to focus our heart, to focus our eyes on what's truly important. And that is God the Father in heaven, who created you, who created me. Remember God is what he's saying. Remember the holiness that God has. There was a time when somebody approached Jesus and he said, good teacher, how do we get into heaven? And Jesus says, well, why do you call me good? There was no one good alone except for the Father in heaven. And you can kind of paraphrase that into this, parenthetically say, there was no one holy except for the Father alone in heaven. And Jesus is saying, remember that God alone is holy. Now, you and I know that Jesus is holy. He's God incarnate. So obviously, he is as holy as the Father. But in this moment, Jesus is saying, remember that God is holy. He is I am that I am. He's the creator of the universe. He is. He was. And he always will be. And then Jesus expands upon that and he says, Remember to pray that may the kingdom of heaven invade the kingdom of earth. Father God, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Interesting if you think about that. It goes in stark contrast to what you and I often want. Our will to be done and God to meet our will and have his will match our own. What Jesus is saying though is no. Pray that God's will be done in your life, that your will align with the Father's. And so that's really the heart of the Father. Jesus doesn't stop there. He continues on and he says, but don't neglect your other needs too. Pray that God meet your daily needs. That, put, that God put food on your table. That God pay your mortgage. That God give you a job to help you Get that daily bread that you need, right? It's not a once-in-a-lifetime bread. No, it's a daily bread. You have daily needs that you need to have fulfilled. We all do. we got to pay the bills. we got to put food on the table. We need shelter over our head, clothes on our body. All those things are daily needs. And so Jesus is saying, don't forget to ask God for those things. But he doesn't stop there. He says, also ask God that you be forgiven. That God forgive you of all your sins just as you forgive your brother and your neighbor. He said, don't forget that part. God forgive me as I have forgiven other people. And then Jesus finishes up this section and says, and ask God to protect you from the temptations of the evil one. Ask God to protect you from the evil forces of the devil, his demons, the legions of hell. Ask God to protect you from all those forces. Because they will attack, and they do attack. I've actually made videos about that too. But you really hear the heart of Jesus. But what's interesting in this, so Jesus doesn't only teach his disciples how to pray. He goes on then to share a story, a parable of how to press in toward God to ask God to fill those needs when you're desperate, when a thing happens that you weren't prepared for. And that's really kind of at the crux in the heart of what we're chatting about today. So we're going to look at those words right now too. Open up your Bible one more time. Verse 5. Then teaching them more about prayer, he used the story. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight, wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to your friend, Another friend of mine has just arrived for a visit, and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose that friend calls out from his bedroom, Dude, don't bother me. The door is locked for the night. My family and I are all sleeping. We're all in bed. I can't help you. But then Jesus says this. But I tell you this, though he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. Did you catch those last two words? It's huge. So I want you to think about the story this way. There's three parties mentioned, and we're going to call them Dave, Bob, and Charles. So one night, Dave is at home and his friend Bob shows up from out of town. Now, maybe he was expecting Bob. Maybe he wasn't, but he shows up late at night. Bob's hungry. 
And Bob's not alone. He's got his entire clan with him. And they're all hungry. But Dave has no food to feed him. So in the middle of the night, midnight, y'all, and for some of us, that's not too late. But if you think about the ancient times, they went to bed when the sun set and they got up when the sun arose. So midnight for them was probably literally in the middle of the night. Well, Dave goes over to Charles's house and he starts pounding on the door. Charles, my friend Bob just showed up and man, they are hungry. I've got no food. Do you have any food? Do you have three loaves of bread that you can give me? And notice how Charles responds. He's like, dude, it's the middle of the night. Don't you, don't you realize that it's in the middle of the night? <laughs> Go away. We're trying to sleep here. And while he doesn't say come back in the morning, it's kind of what's being implied here. He's like, he's like, don't bother me. But then Jesus goes on to say this. What Dave needs to do in that moment is just start pounding on the door, just banging on Charles' door saying, Charles, dude, you got to understand here. I am desperate, man. I need what you have. And it kind of ends there. Dave is being told to have a shameless persistence. And that's what God wants of you. That's what God wants of me. When we are desperate, when something happens in life, like Dave's friend Bob showing up in the middle of the night, Jesus wants to us to approach God the Father with a shameless persistence and just start beating down his door. And so Jesus kind of continues on with that in the next few verses. Let's take a peek at that right now. And so I tell you, and this is Jesus talking, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. And continuing on, verse 11. You fathers, if your children ask for fish, do you give them a snake instead? Uh-uh. Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? <laughs> Gross, by the way. Of course not. Let's put a pause right there. I know it seems like a weird place to break, but more coming up on that in a bit. Look how Jesus wants you to approach God. Not only tell God what you need, but no, be persistent, be insistent, and be consistent. Jesus uses three analogies, all saying the same thing. Ask, seek, knock. They all point to the same thing. Jesus' brother, James, spoke about this too. James chapter 4, verse 2 says, and I'm going to paraphrase, but I'll put the words on the screen for you. You don't have because you don't ask. You've probably heard that before. Jesus is saying, I want you to ask God. I want you to seek God. And I want you to bang on his door, telling him exactly what you need. And I want you to keep banging. Think of this analogy like this, because this is something every single one of us can relate to. Whether you have children or grandchildren, you are a child, or you've never had children. You've seen this happen. So you're in the grocery store, right? And you're in the checkout line and you're doing your social distancing thing and well, there is somebody in the aisle next door to you and they got their little kid in the cart and you hear, mom, 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 mom. And that kid is pointing at like the Snickers bar or something right there. That kid wants something really bad. And that kid is going to wear mom down until mom finally goes, ah, oh, fine, grabs a Snickers bar and throws it onto the, onto the conveyor belt. You've seen it happen. <laughs> Maybe you have kids who do it. <laughs> Mine do. And my youngest are 18 and 19. Um, we've all done it. I've done it. You've probably done it too, right? My 19-year-old, bless her heart, she's a master at this. Even still at the age of 19, if she wants something bad enough, she's like, mom, 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 mom. And she'll keep saying mom until mom answers. She's a pro at it. <laughs> Oh, anyway, a little bit of humor aside, but that's the heart that Jesus wants you to have in approaching God the Father. He wants you to pray like a little kid 
in the grocery store aisle checking out that wants that Snickers bar. He's saying, I want you to press into her to God. I want you to seek him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. I want you to ask and ask and ask. I want you to bang on that door and just pound and say, Mom, 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 or in this case, God, 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 I need this thing. God, I am desperate. This happened in my life. I was not expecting this, right? Somebody shows up at your door, COVID-19, an unexpected surprise, shows up at your door in the middle of the night at a time that was completely unexpected. And what do you do? You go to God. That's the response that Jesus is saying here. You go to God, even in the times of most desperation, even in times where it seems completely inconvenient for us as human beings, it doesn't matter. Go to God. And the beautiful part of this story is that while Jesus is painting this analogy that in an earthly sense, that friend, Charles, right, who's being awoken in the middle of the night, like midnight or even later in our time, and the human answer would be like, dude, go away. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest, if it were me and someone were banging on my door at two or three o'clock in the morning, I'm not getting up. I'm not, I'm not getting up at all. I'm not gonna go answer that door. No way. I mean, so that type of thing happened back then too. And Jesus fully recognizes that, right? Our human instinct is to not want to answer that call in the middle of the light. No matter how desperate it seems to you, to me, it's not that desperate. But when you reverse yourself and you put yourself in the shoes of Bob, whose buddy Dave just showed up out of the blue, COVID-19 just shows up out of the blue, really late in the night, talking about it at a time that's not convenient, and who has a need that needs to be filled, and you have no food in the cupboard. So COVID-19 comes and wants to eat your house alive, and now you have nothing. What do you do? Well, you go bang on God's door in the middle, in the middle of the night. But in this case, what Jesus wants to share with you is God's heart that's completely different from a human heart. And we hear that in verse 13, which takes the story and really gives it an interesting twist. So let's read verse 13 right now. Jesus says this. We don't like how this is worded, by the way, if you're anything like me. So if you sinful people, <laughs> interesting, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? It seems like a, how does that fit in type of thing, right? It's a different answer than maybe what we're expecting. But it doesn't negate the first portion, that God will give good material gifts to those who need and those who ask. What Jesus is also saying here is, here's the real heart of the Father. Not only is the Father going to get up and answer that door and give you what you need, in his own timing, right? If you know anything about how God the Father operates, he gives us what we need, but not always exactly what we want and not always exactly in the timing when we want. If you're anything like me, you're completely and fully human and you, we live in a society of immediacy. Got to have it right now. Got to have it yesterday as we kind of read about here in the scriptures. I mean, Bob here is desperate. He's got to have that Three loaves of bread right now. And you want, think about that three loaves of bread. It's not just one loaf of bread, which would have been enough for a, maybe a family four to get by for a day or two. Now he's saying three loaves of bread. So he's talking about a magnified need, something that's well beyond the normal, right? So I'm talking like you need three months of mortgage payments. You need three months of, of money to pay the bills. That's the analogy here that I want you to see. So not only is this a magnified situation that Jesus is saying, ask God to fulfill. He said, God is going to fulfill that in his own time, in his own space, in his own way. But what he's really going to give you, what you should really be asking for, is something a little bit different. And what God is going to give you is the Holy Spirit. Now I want you to think about this. It seems a little confusing. Well, why would I need the Holy Spirit in this case? Think about what the Holy Spirit gives. Think about what the Holy Spirit brings. He's saying, 
Ask me to infill you. Ask my Holy Spirit to so come into you and, and give you my presence. Ask the Holy Spirit to come into your life and to fill you and to give you the gifts that aren't necessarily tangible but intangible that the intangible will lead to the tangible. When we think about the Holy Spirit, we think about the indwelling, the infilling of God the Father. We think about the presence of Jesus Christ made manifest in our lives, in our bodies, in our hearts. And that's what the heart of Jesus is really getting at here is first seek the kingdom of heaven and all else will be added to you. First seek a relationship with God. First seek a one-on-one -on -one communion with God. Seek communion with Christ. Seek communion with the Holy Spirit. And then all these other things will be added on to you. So really the heart of God here is, yeah, you've got a material need that you need filled. Your belly is hungry. Your buddy's belly is hungry. COVID is hungry. COVID wants to take the bill collector wants to take, and yes, you need to respond to that. And so you go to God and you bang on the door. You're persistent in your asking. It's a huge need and you don't know where else to go. So you go straight to God and you beg and you pound and you ask until God hears your pleas and God hears your cries. But in that response and in that answer of how God is going to respond to you, what he really wants to do is give you his presence to give you his peace. Because when God gives you his peace, then the problems of the world tend to diminish a little bit and things don't necessarily seem like there's such an emergency. Are they? Sure. But the sting of it kind of goes away. And so what should you really be praying for in this moment? When times get tough, when things stink, <laughs> I could use other words, but when you're up against the wall, when you're backed into a corner, when you're between a rock and a hard place, give it whatever analogy you want, you're behind on your mortgage by a few months, you have empty cupboards, you don't know how you're going to feed your kids, you haven't worked for a while, and you're like, God, what am I going to do in this moment? God, I need your help. Well, God say, keep asking, keep knocking, keep seeking, keep pounding, never stop asking God, and never stop telling God what you need. But in that, God says, please also ask for the presence of God to come into your life and to give you his peace. Because I promise you, and I tell you from personal experience, when that happens, everything else, while the problems don't go away, they seem less big. They seem more manageable. And when you put God first, you put the kingdom first, everything else will be added to you. Groceries will go on your table. A roof will happen over your head. Money will come in and trickle in and funnel in and you'll get caught up on the bills in time. And in time, before you know it, that crisis will be gone and be behind you. And you'll be stronger and more powerful for it. And now you'll have a testimony and a witness that you can share when somebody else is going through a similar emergency. That You can say, let me tell you how I got through it. And that's a powerful witness. And it may just lead an unbeliever to Jesus Christ. That's my message for you today. If I've made you think, just give me a comment down below and just say, Jason, you really made me think. If you have a prayer request and you're not afraid to drop it down in the comment section below, please do so. Let me pray for you. If you have a prayer request and it's really personal, don't be afraid to IM me. You can find me on social media. You can email me. You can find my email address through this YouTube page. You can find me on social media through Facebook, through Instagram. Get a hold of me. Let me know how I can pray for you. And until I can see you again, until I get to share with you again, I pray that the Lord bless you. I pray that the Lord keep you. I pray that the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. And I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye.